Hi, hello, and welcome to another episode of, of course, China. My name is Fernando, and this is Ziv. And today we have Billy Lamb in our show. Say hello to Billy Lamb, everybody. Hey guys. Hey Billy. Good, good, good. Yes. Okay, so、um, Ziv, why don't you introduce Billy very briefly、uh, to us? Sure. Billy was、uh, born in Hong Kong, grew up in Hong Kong, then studied in the U.S., then came back, worked for IBM, then went to Beijing. And now he's here in Dongguan. Actually, he's my business partner in our company. Here, we do media and marketing, and、uh, he's really into social media recently.、Um, he's a man of、uh, a lot of interests. Very curious person. Many facets. And he <laughs> works a lot. Some say he doesn't eat. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk. Maybe、I、we'll do, talk. I do eat.、That. I do eat. Hey, Billy, the, legend, the legend is he doesn't eat. Thanks for being here with us, Billy. No problem.、Right? I enjoy this. I think I will enjoy this. Yeah. Okay.、Cool. All right,、uh, Billy. Let me start with a quick question. Sure.、Um, as if it was saying that you were born in Hong Kong. Yes.、Um, can we talk about growing up in Hong Kong、uh, at that time?、Um, what are some of your fondest memories and、uh, experiences at that time? Okay. I. Wow.、Uh, I, I. I was just like an ordinary Hong Kong kid. You know, uh, uh, not uh, rich at all. <laughs> so I, when I was young,、uh, like from the Below, before six six years old,、uh, my mom, my dad, me, and my sister. So four of us.、Uh, we lived in、uh, a, a small apartment, like the the kind of small Hong Kong apartment. Like, yes, like housing. Actually, it's, it's like public housing from public the government. All、yes. oh, right.、Uh, I think the size was something like ten、uh, square meters. That's a that's crazy. And and, and、uh, we also work. Like not not me、yeah. or my sister, my dad and my mom, they worked inside that ten、so、square meters. They made things. Wow! What, what did they make? Gar- garments, you know. They they just、uh, they were providing、Stitching. like a supplier, small、yes. supplier. My dad,、uh, he went to the the factory to get、mm-hmm. the uh, garment. Uh, right. He brought it home, and then my mom with like two or three other ladies. Uh, with the sewing machines, and then they just do yeah. right. Yeah, just stitching. So this、together. is like what we、uh, some of us have seen on the on the internet. I mean, those public housing in in Hong Kong. Yes, it's it's, it's quite、uh, quite interesting. It's quite crazy to think crazy. that yeah, people yeah, yeah. people can live like that. Yes, but、uh, yeah, <laughs> I remember、uh, our our unit. What was next to the、uh, the women shower room?、Okay. <laughs> Because you you don't have sh- shower toilet inside your Your unit, right, right. you need to go out for public, you know,、yeah. shower or a toilet, you know. Right. And ne- we are just next to the、uh, Women. the women shower unit. That's、know. that's uh. Well, <laughs> well, a lot of people think that that's the way like old China was. Uh, I would not think that that's the、you、way. Yeah, mainland. Yeah, the mainland. Right. right. Yeah, but、uh, there's many people, you know, like、uh, when I went to primary school. Uh, but I already moved to、uh, the apartment where my my dad and my mom they are living in right now. I already moved there when I was six years old. But many of my primary school classmates, like more than half of them, they all、Lead、live、like、in、that. yeah、so、units like that.、Yeah. Is it is it? I mean, that's what you know, right? When you are there, that's what you know. You don't know differently. There was no internet. There was no nothing no, back then.、No. Yeah. So I mean, is it still like a happy childhood? Yeah, of yeah, course. I mean, I can tell you guys so many crazy stuff I did, you know. So when people look at it <laughs>、yeah. and they see online and they think, "Oh, that's so sad," it's not exactly、uh, like that. I, no, I, it doesn't have to be I, like I, that.、It's、I didn't. I did not know there's there's another option, you know, when、right. I was young, right?、Yeah. And you, so you sleep in the same、uh, bed with your sister?、Uh, my <laughs> my my dad, my mom,、uh, they slept on the、uh, the. Un- How do you say the, the top? The bunk the, bed. Yeah, the, the the bottom one. Right. And my sister and I were、uh, on the top one.、Yeah. Wow. Your younger sister or older sister? Younger sister. Younger sister. How, how do you? Okay, you say that you moved to.、Uh, by the time you were at primary school, you already moved to a better,、uh, yes. bigger place, right? Yes. How how did the parents did this、uh, progress? How did they progress to that kind of、uh, thing? Because they work a lot. <laughs> <laughs> they worked a lot. Yeah, they said money. Yes. So yes. what is it? They they bought a place or they yes they、yeah. bought a place. Okay,、yeah. I yeah. see. Like like mortgage, you know, down payment and mortgage, you know. Like yeah, of course. Like everyone does. Like、right. everybody does. Yes.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess so. All right. So what about school?、Um, you were in Hong Kong at a time where it was still under British、yes. ruling, right? Yes. Yes.、Um, how, how, what can you tell us about that particular p- p- time of Hong Kong history?、Um, Did it affect you in some way or?、Uh, 
actually not, not a lot, even though uh, stay under British, you know, like management. But uh, I was in a uh, English uh, secondary school in, uh-huh. in Hong Kong, so most of the uh, most of the classes, except like Chinese and Chinese history, I think they are in Chinese. But all the other languages, all the other, other subjects like physics, chemistry, biology, all that, are uh, in English. All when right. I say in English, I meant uh, all the textbooks are in English. But the teachers, they <laughs> they all did it in Cantonese, you know. So that's one of the reasons why when I went to the states, I could not really understand how right. people were yeah, saying. You, you, know. you did go to the states to study, right? Yeah. Um, and and that's an interesting thing to consider when you tell us this. Uh, humble upbringing at the beginning, mm. and you end up going to the United States yes. to study. Right? Um, how, how do you connect those two? Because that's how, how did, how expensive. Did you, how did you? Yeah. How did your parents have the money to do that? Um, once again, they work hard. Hard, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. 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 I, I think you know, in my secondary school, in my class, like forty of us, probably our around maybe like six or seven of us, uh, we did go abroad. You know, uh, I think the only reason was uh, we could not really go up anymore in the education system in Hong Kong because it's f- so Very competitive. competitive. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. So you I mean it's actually in some way it's easier to just go abroad? Yeah, because if you if you don't do that, uh, what can you do? You you need to find a job. You know, right? Mm-hmm. And and uh, you said you mentioned so you studied in school, primary, middle school, later uh, Cantonese back then. Yes, that was the language back then. I mean, even now, but uh, yes, in school, Cantonese was uh, the main thing. Isn't it uh, Mandarin now, even in Hong Kong? Now, I, I'm sure uh, okay. there there are like man- Mandarin classes, you know, right. things like that. But at my time, only Cantonese. So, could you speak Mandarin and when you like when you were 18? No, no, you couldn't speak Mandarin. No, right. Actually, Mandarin is the third language I picked up wow. af- after English. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I was Funny, telling yeah. I was telling Fernando <laughs> that sometimes you ask me how to write some pinyin yes. into the computer. Yes, <laughs> it's <laughs> like pinyin yes. is the fourth language, uh, almost. Yeah, pinyin, <laughs> yeah, kind of like three point five, I guess. Yeah. Maybe yeah, <laughs> yeah. pinyin. Yeah. But uh, okay, so so by the time you finished high school, um, you were sent to the states, or it was it was it you pushed for it, or your parents pushed my, my you? My mom. Your mom? My mom, yeah. She told you, hey, you need to go yes. to the US? Yeah, she said, you, you better continue to study. Otherwise, you, you'll end up doing some, you know, low-labor like low yeah, labor I think, job. I think, I think this is a common thing with parents, right? I don't know about your experience, but, like, my dad was a truck driver. Yes. So, yeah, I guess uh, there was always, like, uh, don't end up like me, you know, get to better places. Right. Study is so important. Yes. Right? Yes. I mean, it is, uh, and yes. I'm very, very happy. I'm glad my, my mom did that, you know. Yeah. Mm. Right. So you went to the States to study what level? University, college, uh, high actually, school? I was lucky. I went to this uh, community college, you know, like Where? two years college in uh, Illinois. Okay. Near Chicago, uh, about 30, 40 minutes from Chicago downtown. Uh, and I st- spent two years there, and then I transferred to the, the university where I got my degree. So you couldn't go to university directly? No. Nope. Okay. That's that's a good path for people who want yes. to go to the States, right? First go to uh, community college and then transfer to university. What did you what did you study over there? Um, community college, I just got the basic degrees. You know, like, I mean, basic subjects like English, math, you know, all that. Yeah. In order for me to transfer all the credits to the university, I graduated, you know. That's the basic thing. And when I moved to... Uh, the university I graduated, uh, I was studying business marketing and management. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, what about your experience living there? Because um, did you have any issues with English? Did you have any any culture shock going over there? For sure. You know, like the first three months, you know, uh, in the States, it was not easy, you know. Like for the first week, it was so tough. You said, yeah, like you had like a host family or yes, something, Yes, yeah, right? I stayed with my uh, host dad, yeah, yeah. Right, in in uh, that was Wisconsin. No, that was uh, uh, in Illinois. In Illinois, Illinois yeah, right? Yeah. And so you arrived there, and you, huh, you you told me before about some experiences you had, like in McDonald's or something like that. No, what? that was the that was the first night we uh, we first flew night. in from Hong Kong, and because of the big storm in Chicago, we land at the small, very small airport near Chicago. Okay, but I did not know, right? Even the pilot said everything in details, but I did not really <laughs> pick it up. So. 
So I, I went down. I said, "Why this Chicago airport is so small? I thought it's the biggest one or one of the biggest one in the states, you know." And then my friend, you know, another Hong Kong guy, told me, "Oh, Bill, this is not Chicago yet." And then I went to McDonald, tried to, to get some food, and of course, you know, I I have no idea what I I should <laughs> order, right? But at the end, I did manage to order. I remember one funny thing is, let's say uh, that was two qua two dollar. And then the the lady was asking for two two twelve or something, and I say why why you ask me more this money than than two two dollar you know because I did not get any idea about sales tax you know right. <laughs> yeah those are the well, funny things did you have any expectations from the U S you know growing up also for me in Israel maybe for you in, in Colombia Fernando um, we see the U S in movies right um, like the we, dream the yeah it's and the we dream. think it's wow and we have expectations right. Mm. Honestly, I don't think I, I I got any of that before I uh, I went to be to be honest, uh, because you know when I was in in Hong Kong like like movies you know most of the movies I think I this uh, w- watch like uh, Hong Kong Cantonese. movies yeah uh, Bruce Lee. A, a bit yeah, a bit of uh, like American movies like Hollywood but not not a lot a lot like that kind of influence you know right so to me it's just, just like oh I need to leave Hong Kong I need to go study abroad by myself you know. I was still in that mood more. You know? But how about sports? I, I know you like sports. Yeah, but uh, bef- before I went, you know, it, it wasn't the thing. I, I right. really paid a lot of attention. What about France, uh, girls in America? Was that difficult? Uh, I, I did not really think about that, right, when I first arrived, you know, because the language, you know, stay away from family, you know, that, that was tough. But after like three months, why I said three months? Because after three months, oh, I enjoyed it so much. <laughs> this <laughs> is know, like friends, ni- girls, you know. This is like 1990, something like that? Uh, 90, 1991. 1991. Yeah. So how often did you talk to your parents from the US? Uh, like once a week. Once a week. On yeah. the phone, phone I suppose. Phone. Very right. expensive, you know, a yes. long distance call. And then we forget out how to use uh, the fax. Uh, I got a, like a cheap fax machine. So this you write letters? Yeah, yeah, I did oh, not need to wait for like seven, ten days for them to get my my, Later, my letters. Right, but I I did send letters like with photos of me, you know. Oh, in the, yeah, <laughs> that's nice. But uh, once we 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 do uh, facts, yeah. Right, it's a report. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, uh, what about f- uh, I like in the U.S. Uh, food and and um, yeah, how 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 did you handle that? Did you get friends that are your friends were Asians or did you make friends with Americans? Uh, because I stayed with my uh, my host dad, that's uh, very important, I think, for me. Uh, because uh, he did bring me into his family. So not only staying with him, we talk a lot, but uh, he brought me and my roommate, uh, who was a Japanese kid, uh, also to his family, like his dad, his mom, his sisters, you know, all that. So so I got the chance to you experience some, yes. the, the American family, like Thanksgiving. Or, well, what's the deal with this host dad? I mean, everybody do that? How? how uh, the community college I went to, uh, that's one of the things. They, they, they try arrange. to help the kids. Yeah, they, they arranged right. uh, FB kids mm-hmm. with a host family. Sometimes, you know, maybe one host, one host family has like three kids, you know, from different countries. And uh, but some of the kids, you know, after like a, uh, a semester or something, they would just leave the host family and then find their own apartment. It's yeah, to Hong, have some freedom, some, some independence. Right, right. But I did not do that. I, I enjoy a lot staying with my host father. You know. mm. Right, yeah. right. So th- and then uh, you went on to graduate. Yes, right to Wisconsin, yeah, to, to finish my degree. Or uh, I guess your mom was proud. Actually, uh, sh- of course, she, she and uh, my dad, they do know like Wisconsin, what, what it was. You right. know? I just told them it, it was uh, a good school. <laughs> I just told them. <laughs> it is, it is, it is a good school. So upon graduation, <laughs> did you get a chance to work in the States or did you come back to Hong Kong straight away? Straight away. Yeah. Straight away. Yeah. I did not really spend any time. I, I, before I graduated, I already uh, told myself, let's just go back to Hong Kong. You know? Why? I don't, I don't think uh, I was competitive enough, you know, compared to the, uh, let's say, the, the American kids. Mm-hmm. There was no business with China yet, like your Cantonese no, no, wouldn't it, be no. a, an advantage. No, it w- I, uh, maybe there, w- there were, but, but I did not really know or thought about that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right, Billy. So um, yes. you came back to Hong Kong mm. and um, how hard was it to get a job for you at that time? I mean, with a degree from the United States, was it easy? 
like I said, I sent out like 84 letters. And mm-hmm. at the end, uh, most of the letters when I got replied, they said no. You know, like, Was it really uh, 80, 84? You remember? Yeah, yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and at the end, IBM ac- accepted me. Uh, they asked for an interview. I, I went, you know, I, I think I talked to like two or three managers. And at the end, I got the offer. You know? So I was lucky. You know, after like uh, maybe like three, four weeks, I think. What kind of a position? It was uh, like a sales representative. Mm-hmm. In a in a team called New Business, which is uh, like only we only cover any clients without installed IBM uh, machines. Okay, yeah. and and that's where you started going to the office and you had to wear a suit. Yes, yeah, so every day. Yeah, like Monday to Friday, nine to six, nine to seven, something. Like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Were you wearing a suit before ever? Uh, in graduation, <laughs> maybe in high school. Yeah, like like graduation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And how how was so how was the experience of working nineties uh, uh, IBM in Hong Kong? IBM was in the at their, at their prime, I guess. Yeah, I think so. yeah. Yeah, uh, <coughs> yeah I, I actually I enjoy it. I, I learned so much, you know, from from this company. You know, like like system processes. You know, uh, your SOP. Yes, the SOP. Yeah, <laughs> I, <laughs> I pick up a lot from from that, uh, and also the managers. You know, because uh, you you have, I had the chance to go out with different managers from different teams you know because i was doing general sales and so uh, but i am as so many different products right so i can go out with uh, not only my team manager but uh, other teams manager as well yeah so you had you some get, mentors yes what was the, the the salary like what was the pay like were you uh, first beginning i think it was a 12.5k hong kong back in two, 1995 that was good for that was good. Hong Kong that at that time? Yeah, I think that was good. What kind of lifestyle did, did this salary afford you? I mean, did you get a car? Did you go out? Did you still live you? with your parents? Or? I did. Uh, actually, I, I have been uh, living with my parents, uh, even now, you know, if I did go back. Right, uh, right. Yeah. You stay with your parents? Yeah, I stay with my parents. Um, lifestyle, you know, you, you, you can go out in weekends, you know, uh, have some dinners, you know. And uh, I bought my car, I think, after I joined IBM, like, Maybe like three years. I I don't really recall now, but uh, because I love cars a lot. But having a car in Hong Kong today is very expensive. Uh, was parking. it the same <laughs> back then? I think so. I think the the parking was something like eight eighteen hundred or two thousand a month Hong Kong in two thousand. Oh, sorry, in nineteen ninety five. Nineteen ninety five. Yeah, two yeah. thousand. That's Our a lot of Hong money. Kong yeah. dollar a month. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, <laughs> there's a lot. I, I I pay I pay three hundred and fifty <laughs> now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How much you think is it now? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the the same five? spot near my apartment. Maybe I don't know. I don't think it's like five. No, but like I heard three. that some some parking spots in Hong Kong cost more than some apartments. Of course. Yeah. You know, if you're talking about like TST, Costway Bay, you know, Central, yeah. for sure, for sure. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So. Um, were you working very hard right there in the beginning, like long hours? Yeah, for, of course. You know, you 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 go back like nine nine thirty, but you don't really leave until like eight. You know, because it's the vibe. You know, when you're in the office, everyone is pushing, everyone's pushing, in the pushing. office. Pushing. You know, you 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 can't feel bad to leave. It's competition, and you got so many things to do. You know, so <laughs> yeah. right. So so you mentioned in the past that uh, uh, you used to do a bit of. Like car ri- racing, like in the street. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, what car did you get? Yeah, we didn't get to that question. Uh, it was a Honda Civic. You know, uh-huh. 1.6, that's an important thing. <laughs> because that's the VTEC version, you know. <laughs> 1.6 Honda Civic. Uh, yeah, yeah. Customized? Yes, yes. Uh, the, the, the rim, the, the wheels, brake, you know. Uh, night trucks. So, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Not, no, not no, that. night trucks? No, 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 no. Not to that extent. No, okay. not to that extent. No Tokyo yeah. Drift. What, no, was, no. what <laughs> was your first car? My first car? Gee, my first car was, well, a Volkswagen Beetle. Oh, oh great wow. car. Because my, my dad used to uh, collect them. So oh. he had like five of those. Oh, okay. And then after you graduate from university, there, here you go. Take your Volkswagen Beetle. So they 1957 Volkswagen Beetle. Wow. wow. My dad used to restore them. That's oh. a special car today. Yeah. If, if people have that, today. yeah. Wow. It, today we still have three in the family. Wow. They stopped making them, right? The, those Beatles, yes. The Beatles, a long yeah. time ago. They're all classics. <coughs> right. <laughs> so what? Uh, w- after uh, so you worked for IBM mm-hmm. in Hong Kong, mm-hmm. and um, what happened then? Uh, how long did you work for them? Uh, like eight, eight, nine years. 
Yeah, I think, yeah. Wow, okay. You were traveling or uh, did actually, you did you move on, promoted? Uh, no, uh, actually I was uh, like a sales uh, and then I moved to channel sales, which okay. I, my client, uh, they were not the end users, but our business partner. So they helped us to sell to end users. So those were those those was my main role, you know, at the later part uh, inside IBM, and then I went to a dot com dot com company because at that time the dot com yeah the, bubble, dot com the internet thing, you know, I went uh, to a dot com company for about two years, and that that was the time I traveled a lot, you know, because when I was in IBM it's just Hong Kong, mm-hmm. but I moved to this dot com company and I traveled to uh, all over China, Taiwan, Australia, US, you know, yeah. Wow. That was fun. So the outcome was in Hong Kong. Yeah. <clears throat> and you traveled the, the, a lot. The, the office was in Hong Kong. It's, it was a US company. Right. Like a left Nasdaq company. Right. Yeah. And then... Uh, uh, what was your role yeah, for, what did you for do them? For channel, again. Ch- oh, we got channel sales. So I, I dealt with uh, business partners. They sell to end users. So I managed them. So you support those those, those retailers or those ah sorry. <laughs> uh, we call it uh, business. We don't call them retailer. We call them like business partners. You know. Okay. Did you enjoy? A lot. Why? What did you enjoy? Because you, I I had the chance to travel a lot. And business class and all. And almost all of them were in business class. It was crazy, you know, with the dot com company, all those money, you know, and uh, <laughs> and that that's that was the opportunity where I could uh, look at China. And then I was telling myself, I say, my God, you know. I you mean the mainland. Yeah, the mainland, yeah. Right. There's so much opportunity here and it's so much fun. And that's why I decided, I say, I need to find a way to come to uh, China, mainland, to work. So you went yeah. into China for uh, on the job, to, to mainland? Yes. Where, I, Beijing, Shanghai? Uh, it was Beijing. Beijing. It was Beijing. I was helping my friend uh, to start his Beijing office. In right. Beijing, yeah. and he, so you you were going to Beijing on on business. Yes, and you couldn't speak Mandarin. No, <laughs> I remember when I first. <laughs> so you go to America, you're gonna speak English. You come to Beijing. <laughs> yes, I remember when I first arrived in Beijing. I got into a cab, and I tried to talk to the guy in English, <laughs> because my instinct is like not Cantonese. It was English. Right. Right. Go of course, language. that guy did not understand. You know. And he also probably looked at you like. Yeah. You're Chinese, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on? <laughs> right, right, right. What happened here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, but you, you got you got by with uh, English and Cantonese? Yes. Yeah, I mean, but I pushed myself to, to talk in Mandarin, right? So when from uh, your fluent, your first mother language is Cantonese. Cantonese, yes. So for you to, to learn Mandarin, it's not like for me to I, learn Mandarin, I must right? say it would be easier. It must be, right? It must be, yeah. Because the, the, the written character, they are very similar, yeah. They are more complicated in Cantonese, right? That's the traditional Chinese. No, mm-hmm. actually, the Hong Kong one is traditional Chinese. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. It's more complicated than the yeah, yeah, the, than, the, than the Mandarin. One. Yeah, right. The written one, I mean, yeah. So you you were going in business, you're exploring uh, the mainland, and uh, you said you kind of like started thinking, mm. oh, I need to, yes, I need to go into the mainland. But to be honest, at that time, the the is more the the fun part. I think all oh, this. This city or China, China, especially so Beijing, you know, it's fun. This city, you know, more the fun part than the business part. To be really honest, so this is early two thousands, yes. right? Yeah. What was so fun in Beijing that you couldn't get in Hong Kong? I right. Mean. Yeah. Uh, to be really honest, I think the main thing uh, was uh, girls. Girls. Yes. But they couldn't what speak with them. <laughs> Okay, so you mean you mean just uh, how is it different in Hong Kong? Just that different? Because look, for example, if I go to Hong Kong and I see, I mean, back in the day, okay, the mm. year two thousand, I used to go to Hong Kong, and you're like, wow, they they, they look more Western right. than than the Chinese, mainland but Chinese they look girls. More. Yeah, they carry themselves a little bit different. Right. So when you went to Beijing and they looked different to you, uh, what was what was appealing about? That? I mean, I did not think too much about the look, but I. I got that feeling is uh, they were a lot more friendly, mm-hmm. uh, easier to approach. Okay, you know, yeah. Right. I'm not sure whether <laughs> I can understand okay. that. Yes, yeah. they, like for example, how they're very, very friendly to us, right? They see you yeah. probably also as a because I I could not really speak the language, right? And when I when I just <laughs> tried to speak Mandarin, sometimes to them maybe you sounded I like a foreigner. Funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, you were interesting. <laughs> yes, yes. I guess I think to be honest, even like after like. 15 years now, sometimes I still got that feeling from people. 
you know, when I when I do the live thing, people laugh because I just could not really speak the language properly. So you mean properly, it's very yeah. easy to see f for a uh, for a uh, Chinese from the mainland that grew up here. It's very easy for them to notice you're not you oh. didn't grow up here. So obvious. So you're kind of like a half a foreigner. To some of my friends, they do they do say that you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's yes. that's interesting. So then, what happened? You were for working for that dot com company, um, traveling, and yeah, the, the bubble burst. burst. I guess yes. <laughs> that's what happened. What yes. happened? Yeah, uh, they laid you burst. off. What? Yes, they. Uh, I think they lay off so many rounds, probably like six or eight rounds of uh, employees in Hong Kong. Uh, actually, Hong Kong was the headquarter for Taiwan as well. And actually, I was the one uh, going to Taiwan to close that office. And oh. then I was the second last batch uh, being laid off. So, so after me, one more quarter and the office closed in Hong Kong. You were tasked with uh, closing the Taiwan office. Uh, yeah, my, my manager in Australia said, Billy, go to, go to Taiwan to do that. <laughs> why, why did you, did, did, were you scared? Were you like worried about uh, doing that? I, or Honestly, because after so many rounds already, so we, we all kind of like knew got the idea. Coming. Yeah, yeah. So when I told the, my colleagues in Taiwan, they understood, you know. Like right. I need to see you in my office. They already know. <laughs> <laughs> Billy's coming. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> this can't be good. Yeah. <laughs> right. So then you said you were interested in the mainland. Yes. <coughs> the, you were laid off. Um, yes. Then what happened then? You, you were in Hong Kong still. Yes, so um, because uh, they, they gave me some, some cash, right? Right. Yeah. So Severance I, pay. Yeah, so I could uh, stay in Hong Kong for a, a few months, you know, but uh, it's, it's, it's bored, you know, you, you got nothing to do. And then I went uh, to uh, work for this Hong Kong, com Hong Kong Singapore company, IT again. And that's the why I got the chance to know the guy who wanted to open the Beijing office, I said earlier. Mm -hmm. And then I talked to the guy, the guy said, yeah, really, help me to open the Beijing office in, in Beijing. And that's why I had the chance to go to Beijing. So for the next company. Yes. And, um, well, you transitioned into entertainment. You transitioned to um, clubbing and club management and DJing and all these things. How did that take place? Okay, I actually in the middle, uh, after I went to Beijing, I helped the company to set up, but I think I, I worked for him for like maybe six months. Mm -hmm. It didn't really work out. And then I s tried to find opportunity, and then I started to work with some foreigners to do a trading. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, because when I was in this dot-com company, we sold the, the product to one of the company in Beijing, and they did a lot of trading. Mm -hmm. uh, to overseas, so I knew some foreigners there. So and then after this IT thing, and I started to talk to a few of them, and then one of them started to talk, work with me to start this trading thing together, and that's that's how I get into trading actually. And while I was in Hong Kong, I, I said I enjoyed party a lot. I went out a lot. You know, I went out like three, four nights a week. <laughs> so I started to know about like DJs. You know, uh. uh club operation you know all that you know so while doing trading i started to do event party as well at the club you know yeah yeah how how how, how why did you get uh, <coughs> curious about that like how do you while you're doing other trading and other stuff okay you go into clubs you like to party that's fine we yes. you know many people like to party yes but why going the further step like you know really okay i think um the main thing is i i want I I like to be like uh, I got the c what center of attention. How you call yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. center of attention. Yeah, I I kind of like that since I was uh, young, and I I was into music, right? So I watched some YouTube videos and I started to pick up how to DJ from yeah. YouTube. Yeah, from YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> actually, that's what that's how I tell people how to learn to be a DJ. You don't need to pay no one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, so in those early days, um, you said that you watched. YouTube videos and then you started learning how to DJ. Did you have your own equipment? Did yes, you yes. Because one one of the thing uh, is you need to get some basic gear in order for you to learn, uh -huh. and that's what I did. So daytime trading at night, I learned some DJing at home, and then I also I went out to club, you know, to meet friends, you know, and then I started to actually the the first event I did was in was in Dongguan. Right. That's your so first that's when the first time yes. we met, like what was it, two thousand eight? What is it? Two thousand six. 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 
Right. I was working with this uh, this dude, uh, James? James Moore. Yeah. James. So yes. Which bar? Tao or the Tau other one before? Tao and Ice. Oh, yeah. Ice bar. Yes. Right. Tau so you did a party there. That was the first. Many party I did with oh, him. Many parties yes. with him. Yes. A, you DJed. Yes. That was your first gig. Yes. Was it good old times with uh, scratching no, or CDs that was, or? That was the uh, the controller, which most of the people they do now. Is mm -hmm. Very easy. Just one big piece with a laptop, then you, you, you are good to go, you know. I see. What, what kind of music got you into doing that? <coughs> was there any specific kind of music that that's why you wanted mm. to DJ? You would or I would probably say maybe pop, pop and uh, hip hop, yeah, yeah, to to really get me into this. Right. So you were you were so that you moved here, or I mean, you were doing trading, right? That's yes. what got you here to, yes. to the south of China, yes, right. right? Because I needed to take care of the factory. I okay. need. I needed. What to were you making? Uh, insoles, like the the piece you put inside your shoes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Aftermarket product, you know, a okay. big company in the US. Yeah. That's what you were doing here, yes. 2006. Six to 2008, and that's how I met you. Right, right. Yeah. I remember you came in and you said, "Let's do a party." I think we didn't go for it. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> we, we did. We did go we, for it. We worked with Jenny. I remember the design. Yes. Yeah, was a some hands. hands. Yeah, 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 I remember. Yeah, I think yeah. maybe I still have <laughs> it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you were here 2006, 2008. So. Yes. The, the trading yes and then what happened and then I did not because I because my girl girlfriend um, she's from Beijing so it's the long long distance relationship is way too tough for me man and mm. then I said okay uh, I, I needed to go back that's why I went back to to Beijing oh. and then I worked with a, a team of like uh, UK foreigners and Hong Kong German people to to do this audio company and that's how I met T Okay. You know, the, okay. The, 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 the German genius. The so German far. genius. Sound. Yes. Yes, yeah. yes. The sound engineer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So and also at night doing the club thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So I know that you were uh, a part owner, the manager of the club Suzy Wang. Yes. Which is, I've heard about it before. I right. mean, um, in Beijing? Yeah, yes. in Beijing. Suzy Wang. Suzy yeah. Wang. Yeah. Okay. Is it open still? No. No. Yeah. Um, so what you were doing that while doing something else? Actually, okay, I, this audio company it was pure daytime job, right? But at, like I said, at night I I still went out and party a lot, right? So uh, and because of the experience I had in Dongguan organizing parties, so I uh, I went to talk to the uh, the main owner of Suzy Wang and say, how about I I help to organize some events for you. Right, and then at the end she, she said, "Really? How about you invest some money and you uh, become my partner?" You know, <laughs> and then that's what I did. <laughs> ah, yes. And then you also, so you were there every night by that uh, point, like five, five, six nights a, a week. What, what, what? How was it to kind of uh, be involved like that, run a club in Beijing at that time? A successful club, I guess, right? Uh, people actually back in like two thousand eight, like the Olympics time, it was very, very, very successful. But by the time I started to do that, it was something like two, 2012, something like I remember. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't easy already because so many competitions, you know, mm. and the whole club vibe in, in China, including Beijing, uh, have changed so much, you know. So. Is there any club in China that is still strong and been strong for 10, 20 famous years. Famous across the like country. Famous across the country. I mean, there are some names. Uh, they have been around for a long time. But uh, the particular one in Beijing, I must say, besides Zuzi Wang, which uh, we are not doing it anymore, uh, there are two in, in Beijing. Uh, they, are, they are at the um, Worker Stadium, uh, North Gate. Uh, one called Mix, M-I-X, and the other called Vix, V-I-C-S. So those are the two really old, but I think still very popular clubs. I haven't been back for a few years. I don't know now, but uh, but before I left, uh, they were still very very popular. Uh, how how is it that um, if you think, for example, about a foreigner that is a DJ right back in America or in Europe, and is thinking, well, what's it like to be a DJ? Or, or to organize events in China. Um, do you think they have uh, an opportunity? Is there, is there a chance for them to come here and, and work at clubs? Um, honestly, working at clubs, uh, I don't think it's that, not, not, not 
difficult, but uh, there's too many options right now. Like, uh, for example, I, I know so many uh, young uh, foreigners, like they may be from Russia, Ukraine, they're already working here in clubs, you know. Mm-hmm. I think for foreigners, they really want to try and see China and have, have a fun tour or whatever and try to work with some agent and see whether they can be the guest. So the idea is that they tour China. Yeah, something like that. You know, work with some agents so they, they link up with different clubs in different cities and then just bring them here and then they can have a tour, you know. Is Instead that of come here and work at a club, you know, I would suggest. Is that yeah. profitable? Yeah, I mean, uh, when I was back in Beijing, uh, when I mean, when I was at Suzy Wong, we also asked for guests to come. I think at that time, uh, about five to ten k per gig. Oh, that's not bad. R and B, yeah, per gig. Yeah. Right, and then they went around did ten gigs in China so, yeah, in one like week or whatever. Was, yeah, yeah. So it's okay, you know. Yeah, yeah. spent one month in China, eighty yeah. eighty thousand, not bad. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. So. Um, then, you, so you were in Beijing, 2008, mm-hmm. until... Two, 2000 and, uh, was it four, I think, yeah. Until? Until 2014, I think, and then I came, came down. Right, and um, so organizing the uh, events in Beijing, in Beijing the whole time you had a day job, and you had a... <laughs> the, because the, uh, the night, night job is... So demanding, man. Uh, so I only went back to the audio company only Monday. And oh. Monday was my off day uh, at the club. From the club. Yeah. So Tuesday on, and I, I went back to the club. So you, 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 could, you, were, you had a share in the club. Yeah. So you made money from the club. Yeah. Right. But that's what we, at the end, we did not really make money. So. Right. Yeah. So what, what do, you, what do you, you think that the club is a good business in China now? Uh, always, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So why people it's, do it's it? tough. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. Yes, but uh, tough. I mean, is it so? Is it a business of just passion or? Okay, let me put it this way: the way we we ran our club, or even right like, like now here, live our club here or our bar, whatever here. You know, we we try to do it like a like an actual bar or club, which we have a platform for people to have some fun, dance, meet people, right? For example, we don't do dice, right? Right, but uh, but that's how we run a club or bar, which is so difficult in China. The other way, the Chinese way to run it, they sell drinks. Okay, for example, like some of the big club, they, their transaction is huge every every night. May not be now, but uh, but they they sell like bottle of alcohol cost like thousand quite a bottle or even more, but they don't drink it. There's a it's like a culture here now. They just pour it. They just waste it. They don't I mean, drink it. No. They, for example, they just pour the alcohol, let's say, on, 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 on a girl. They just pour the whole bottle. And maybe two or three people, they, they pour like two or three bottles just on a girl. And then just waste them. And that's, that's why there's a lot of money involved. <laughs> but we don't do things like this. We don't... We, we, we would never do things like this. But this is some of the clubs. That's how they run their business. So that's why the transaction per night is like crazy. It's a lot of money involved. We're talking hundreds of thousands a night? Or yes. Probably a million. Wow. Wow. No, a table. Really? Yes. But it still exists now or you mean yes, a few I, years ago? I mean, because I do still, I, I do talk to some of the owners with, you know, different brands, and that's that's how I was told. You know. Wow, it's crazy. You wow. Know. So, did you DJ in different places in China? Oh, uh, I was like Suzy Wang. Did you do some yeah, DJ course, there? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, what what's like? What was a good gig for you? What, what's a, what's a good gig for a DJ? Uh, good gigs. You got a, a lot crowd. of feedback. You know, people dance. You know, the uh, the dance floor dance, dance floor is full. Right. You know, people give you uh, give you drink. People high five with you. That, that those are the fun things. What's the largest um, audience that you played for? Uh, maybe the, the I don't know, uh, 100, one hundred, one one hundred fifty, something like. Mm. You know, okay. on, 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 like dancing, you know, like because in our in our room in Suzy Wong, when it was full, it can be like three hundred people, you know. Wow. Right. You know. So you think? I mean, uh, people that uh, even English teachers that are into DJing mm-hmm. in China. Can mm-hmm. they can they make it? Can they? I mean, 
I think the most important thing is about uh, the the visa thing right now, you know, um, because it's uh, getting tougher and tougher to get the like proper work. I mean, even if they do have a work permit for teaching, right? They can DJ uh, no. legally. No, you need you need that. Yeah, I mean, you can do it with friends or something yeah, like that. That's but okay, right. Yeah, that's okay. So maybe practice. Like here is okay, yeah, but not in a big <coughs> club, you know. Right. Yeah. All right, guys, uh, we're going to go into a short break and we're going to play our first game of the podcast. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a second. All right. So we are back with a game that we all love and enjoy, which is this or that, Billy. This What is that. that game about? This or that. We're going to give you uh, options of things to choose, mm -hmm. two or three things, and you will have to tell us what uh, is your choice. And explain to us what reason is there behind your choice. Oh, okay. okay, okay. So, you want to start? Sure. Sure, I will start. First one is automatic or manual? Cars. When it comes to a car. car. Manual. Thousand times. Thousand times manual. Yes. <laughs> Why? A lot more fun. You a can lot more control. Up so. and down, you know, heel and toe. You know, there's a lot more fun. When you're sure. not in traffic jam. I don't mind. You don't mind. Even traffic jam. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, let me go to <laughs> mine. Um, when it comes to uh, uh, Hong Kong, do you prefer Kowloon or Hong Kong Island for partying? For partying? Yeah, if somebody wants to come to Hong, to Hong Kong, Kong to party. Hong Kong Island, for sure. Where exactly? Uh, near uh, Lang Kui Fong. Lang Kui Fong. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Was it always big on parties, Lang Kui Fong, when you were... Yeah. Teenager? Yeah, I, I did not go when I was young, but uh, it's, it's huge, yeah. Suffering I'm now, though. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one. iOS or Android? iOS. Thousand times. <laughs> <laughs> You're very sure in your answers. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> iOS, quick man. answers. I, I was iOS for a very long time, and then I changed to Huawei and can't go back. Really? I can't go. I mean, really. I mean, I get expendable memory or two SIM cards. I can't All beat right. that. Or you got to pay a lot of money for an iPhone 11. Sure. Okay, my, my, my question. As a DJ, uh, sorry, as a customer, what do you enjoy more? A big arena with a DJ or a small club with a DJ? As a customer? Yeah, uh, when you go to okay. listen to music, a big S arena or a small club? Small club, yeah. What's, what's different? What's uh, I think easier to, to mingle with people in a, in a small club. Ah, okay. Yeah. Makes sense. All right, next one. Uh, we do a lot of music questions here. <coughs> <laughs> Earphones or headphones? Headphone. Headphone. Yeah. The one you have now. Yes. For anything. What what brand is that? Uh, this is V Motor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, headphone for sure. You just uh, hear better. Or yeah, yeah. Uh, better sound, you, you, better you quality. Can, yeah, you can, you know, like kind cancel of like the block, noise. Yeah, block the the outside noise. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have one that's not music related. Although I have another one, but we'll get back to that. Now, stinky tofu or chicken feet? Uh -huh, okay. There's uh, chicken feet, probably. Yeah, chicken feet. Probably. You probably like both. Because I I think why is I say probably because I think I. Do eat chicken feet more often than stinky tofu? Yeah, it's more available. I, yeah, I easier to can't find. Take stinky tofu. You but cannot. No, but my wife loves it, but she's not allowed in the house. <laughs> but you do eat chicken feet. Chicken yeah. feet. I love chicken feet. <laughs> yeah. There's something very addictive about it. Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're, in a, um, you're in a small percent of foreigners in China. Very small. You know that. Yeah. All right. Next one. Uh, uh, Hong Kong, Beijing, or Shanghai. Which one you'd prefer? Wow, this one is not Shanghai for sure, but uh, Hong Kong and Beijing. I wanted to say Hong Kong, but after the past, you know, few months, few months, I probably would say Beijing now. You know, do you, Hong Kong is because my parents are there, my sister, you know, my brother-in-law and their kid. And also very easy to, you know, shop and, you know, go around, you know, mountain beaches, you know, that it's, it's nice. Uh, yeah, but what happened in the past, you know, eight months, man. We're know, probably going to talk about that in a second. But uh, I'm interested in a part of your answer. You just went very quickly and said, Shanghai, no. What's... Because I did not spend a lot of time mm -hmm. there first. And second thing, you know, Shanghai people, I think they are very proud about themselves. I've heard that so many times. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's tough to get into 
you know, the they're circles. Yeah. You're saying yeah. it very nicely. They're proud of themselves. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's you now, and I have one more after. Okay. Now, hip hop or electronic music? Hip hop. Really. <laughs> I would I would follow up with my, the last question because it's related before he explains because the last one is Jay Z or Tupac. Tupac. So hip hop and Tupac. Yes. Old school. Old school. Yes. I like Tupac <laughs> too. Yes. Okay. What do you? Okay. This is unrelated, but what do you use to listen to your music? Do you use your iPhone or do you use Spotify? Do you use? Honestly, now I we really don't have a lot of chance to listen to music a lot. You know, um, when I was in young in Hong Kong. Uh, radio, you know, uh, vinyl, mm -hmm. you know, cassette tape. But most of the stuff I listened to was like Hong Kong artists, to be honest. And then in the U.S., I did not really listen to music a lot. You know, I made a lot of cassette tape. But again, I, s I stick with the <coughs> Hong Kong artists a lot, even when I was in the U.S. Until I think I went to Beijing. You know, I started to go to clubs, you know, and I started to go into like hip hop, pop, you know, all that, you know. All right, and this was this or that. Okay, so let us move on to the next thing that we wanted to uh, talk with you because I see you on my WeChat moments all the time yeah. with short videos sure, that you yeah. make in Douyin. Do, do Douyin. 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 Okay, which is the Chinese version of Tik. Talk. So, um, what what's up with that? <laughs> what's up with, <laughs> with that? Okay, um, I think I, I have uh, started to pay attention to uh, short videos for a while now, and I think until middle of last year, when we uh, were planning for the uh, craft beer festival, I was uh, telling myself maybe it's time to try this and try to pr promote the event using short videos. Mm -hmm. And then that's uh, that was the time I started to uh, get the Douyin account, you know, tried to, to uh, get into that community to understand how it works and all that. And then after I spend more and more time, I, I find out, oh my God, more and more people are, are in that platform. They send out a lot more different contents and, and all that. And uh, especially at the end of last year and beginning of this year, especially with the uh, coronavirus, and we spent even more time on that. And one key thing I think uh, in the past like few months, you know, we started to see big brands and big artists. Uh, they started Stars. to get into this community as well, or this platform. Is it getting better? Like, uh, because I mean, if you ask me a year ago, today, I would say, I'm not gonna use it. I don't wanna download it, right. but I'm using it now. Yes, yes. I, I, you think quality has gotten yes, better? Absolutely. I mean, for the past like eight months, nine months I've been using it, I, I, I must say the contents I have been receiving now uh, is much better than what I did get like eight months ago. My yeah. experience was when I first heard about it, I downloaded, but my wife actually told me not to use it. My wife used to tell me like, this is for, this is her, her words, <laughs> for uneducated people, so don't judge me, okay? So I, I kind of like deleted it, but did not really understand what she was saying. Um, well, with all these things that we've been experiencing here in mm. China at the beginning of 2020, I found that she downloaded it and she spent tons of time on that. <laughs> so I'm like, where did your education go? <laughs> but what, um, explain to us, um, why do you think is the, the appeal of Douyin for, for custom, for, I mean, for viewers, for users? What is so, um, I don't know, addictive about Grabbing. it? Okay, I, I think uh, for all of us, I would say uh, overseas in, in China, I think we do prefer picture more than text and mm. then video more than pictures. And it, and the way Douyin works, you know, you it's just so easy to keep watching the next video. It, you can just, just swap in this and then keep watching the next one, the next one. So this is the way, that, that very smart to design this. So you just... You just don't want to leave because if this video, let's say after you watch it for three seconds, uh, it's like not it. interesting, and then you just go to the next one, and, and it plays right away, you know. So you so you there's can no just keep there's watching. no searching. It's just you just can you passing, can do search. passing through. I think you, you can do search like key tag or topics, but uh, but they just keep pushing things to you based on what you have spent more time to watch. I think I watched the Black Mirror chapter an episode about something similar and those kind of companies they actually have they have people in positions just for i don't know what they call it but 
just to make sure people stay on the app, like addiction. Yes. Like people, psycholog- psychologists right. that are like uh, advising them how to get This is how you get them hooked. Yes. Hooked, yeah. Which is a, sounds kind of bad, right? Uh, yeah. Well, it's the same way that video games are, are designed, actually. True, true. Yeah. They're designed to be addictive, to keep you there, to keep you coming, to keep you buying. Right, right. So, I mean, it's, it's uh, yeah, it sounds a bit, uh, I don't know, is it, is it a capitalism? Of course. Yeah, of course, China. That's, that's, what <laughs> it, that's what it is. But yeah, I mean, I, I think that uh, the only thing we can do is to help make it better and yes. more useful yes. and more entertaining, uh, a little bit higher level. Yes, more good content. Yeah. Is there censorship in Douyin? Yes, of course. Uh, some of the <laughs> tags, if you put in, uh, you just cannot uh, do it. You they know? don't allow like, you. Like, for example, like, uh, on live, we do sometimes, you know, when our fans, they try to type something and tell me, uh, I, I just... I just could not see it. You could not see it. They can write it. They don't they, see it. They, 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 they could type it. They could send it. But uh, I could not see it. You know. One experience, I went on live with Billy uh, a few weeks ago uh, for my home. Uh, he did live on Darwin. And uh, I went on uh, split screen live with him. And uh, everybody that are watching him, they could uh, watch me at the same time. And I was doing this. And uh, after a little bit while... Someone said, you can't do that, right? No, no, cannot. Like drink. So now when I drink, I kind of walk away from the camera. But you can drink that. Nobody knows what it is. But still, I, I don't want to whisk it, right? Really? No, I, I, if you watch my live now, I, I don't drink no more. I In front walk. of the camera? No, no more. Really? I but I've seen people smoking on, on, on Douyin. But you, you are not supposed to. Yeah. So this is the thing. You know, you can. I heard something about the bananas. Banana? That the, the women <laughs> were eating bananas in suggestive ways and then bananas were f- forbidden or something. I don't know. I'm I don't know. I don't, I don't know. use it so much. But no, nobody know. kicked me out, but some people, right, said you shouldn't do you that ha- because you could be yes, kicked exactly. out. Flagged There's or a risk involved. Yes, it's yeah. a risk. It's not like it happens every time or something. No, no, no. With text, it's easy to control, right? Yes. Because it's a system. It's Actu- input. Sure. Actually, um, one interesting experience, you know, like maybe like two, three weeks ago, we did a video about uh, Trump mm-hmm. because he, right. uh, like in the press conference or something, he said Chinese virus. China virus, yeah. Uh, and then I did a video and I tried to push out three times. We could not do that. So I think the, the engine well, not yeah. only detect the text you input, but also o- the topic. They also s- listen to what you say. Not only, you had the subtitles on the video. Maybe yeah. there is a computer that can See, read that. So yeah, may, maybe on the video. Subtitle. So wait, wait, wait. You're talking about Chinese censors protecting Trump? No, or? I think I think <laughs> I don't think I think it's like not too um, not too sophisticated. I think they just hear these words. and yeah. they they ban it. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't think protecting Trump that doesn't make sense, no. right? <laughs> well, uh, if they wanted to be, f- I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. So, how do you prepare content? How do you plan your content for the win? And where else do you publish it? Okay, uh, we have a few programs uh, we plan. Like uh, one of them, let's let's say I call it believe vlog, which is like my daily life. You know, authors, you know, outside, you know, having fun. And then there's another one called Billy's uh, Business Talk, which I share like work experience, you know, for like business owners or, or pe- young people, you know. And so I have different programs. So I'd, uh, I plan them like maybe a few uh, videos per week. And then we, we wrote a script. Uh, we videotape that and edit and then push out. But this is not how you started. Uh, no, no. At the beginning, <laughs> it was only one thing. You know, when I... Think of some new thing, and then I just. But just you, did you the started video. Uh, from what I remember. You started. You just started doing it and edit it yourself and put it up, and and then you you believe that quantity is very important. Yeah, in in the TikTok or Douyin, uh, yeah, community, yeah, quantity is important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you still need to keep the good quality, but uh, you need right. to do more. Yeah. So the quantity first, and then the quality gets better. To, I mean, I I, I would say. Even though quant- quality well, quantity is important, but quality you need to have like minimal quanti- uh, quality, right? Like the subtitle we do. You know. So, do you think anyone can just pick it up? I mean, um, 
anyone can just pick up, uh, do some videos, start editing, put it up on Darwin because it is different than YouTube. Um, it's short. It's short. It's yeah. very mm-hmm. short. Yes. Yeah, it's maximum one minute, is it? Uh, actually, you can do a fifteen. I think. Yeah. Can fifteen do, can minutes. Can do more, but, but I mean, it's mostly uh, through a uh, a different uh, app. Up- upload. No, it's the same app, but through a different uh, third party or something. No, no, no. The same app, but through a different uh, button function. You know? Okay. Yeah. Is it available to everybody? Or I think so. I think so. Huh. But still, uh, most of the videos are what thirty seconds. What's the average on that one? I would say fifteen. Uh, seven to twenty seconds. So what I understand, peop- some people do uh, do it short intentionally because of the algorithm. See that that win. I mean, I guess YouTube is the same, right? We spoke about it, Fernando. There is an algorithm for the, retention. because there is ra- yes. ranking, right? You search for um, sex. Mm-hmm. And there is uh, um, ranking, like in Google, right? Mm-hmm. So there is some algorithm there, right? Well, in the terms of the search, or yeah, in terms of the the yeah, in terms of I put a video on YouTube. Yeah. I have no subscribers. Mm-hmm. Anyone gonna watch it? No, you gotta push it. You gotta advertise it. You gotta no, share the, f- the link with people. But the video have uh, keywords. Sure. Someone may find it through search, without mm, me yeah. sharing it, right? Yeah, that's what makes it hard at the beginning to figure out what is it that you have to write, what kind of tags you need to add to your video, what title to give it, so that it becomes searchable. Right, but okay, so so in Darwin is a, is a little bit different, right? Because once you open it, boom, they give you videos. Yeah, there's right? nothing. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about the. So there is an algorithm to that. Who, how can I be the one that they're giving to you? First thing, first you out. Following, I don't know. <laughs> without you following me, so I think the more, I, yeah, the more I'm, I have likes, views, right? Uh, ah, okay. Length of views within the video. That's why some people are doing shorter videos. Because then more chance you would watch the whole video. Yes. Ah, so okay. my algorithm gets better. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. So your that's ranking is better when somebody watches yes. your entire video. Yes, yes. 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 So that, that is interesting, yes. Darwin. Yes. But also, um, you can. how can you monetize on Darwin? I think uh, not like YouTube. Uh, you can put the ad or all that inside. Three things. First, if you are famous enough, people may may pay you money to uh, do the to the product placement right in your video like a That's kol yeah. influencer second thing is that uh, you do live and then people will give you like gifts you know they, 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 they what send is it you Dowing coin yeah Dao like, Dao uh, like tokens no 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 uh, something like that in, in nang, in nang, okay think, in nang, yeah. so it's kind of like coin uh-huh. the second thing and third is uh, you sell you sell product right you know? You, you you put product inside your videos or inside your life and then people can just go there and buy and then you like can a link it. yeah like a and link the, the, yeah and this is like it's not like your own merchandise like you make a shirt with a channel name not necessarily no, right no, this, it's a to. program you connect to yes yes probably you must have a certain amount of right, followers followers first yeah. and and um i heard that um uh like a million a million followers on darwin it's it's probably like Two hundred, yeah, exactly. It's not, not like much. it's like two hundred thousand followers on YouTube or something. Mm-hmm. It's harder to get followers on on other Billy Billy, right? Right? Yeah. I, did you hear that? They're no, like more valuable. Know. Yeah, they're, they're they're more valuable in other platforms than in Douyin. Right, because there is more substance. More substance inside, huh? Yes. Yeah. yeah so it's and uh, more skippable. Ping, ping, ping. Right, right. Hey, I have a question. Uh, when you do your live shows, mm. you play music. Yes. Uh, are there any issues with copyrights and okay. things like that? I was talking to one of my friends in Beijing, uh, who is also a DJ, and he sent me something to look at. I think what I need to do is I put some kind of like a disclaimer on the screen, mm. say I don't uh, own any copyright of the thing. Okay. I'm playing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. but you haven't been doing that. No, which I should. Yeah. Right. Just like the drink and the cigarette thing, you know, just. But that's interesting Be because l- I, I know that a lot of people do that. I mean, there's music inside the, the, the app that you can yes. put to your videos, and that's, yes. I suppose that's not an issue. But the music that you play is not. It's just you use your equipment to equipment play music. Or, or even YouTube streaming or all that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, what is, uh, what's the next phase for, for you on Darwin? First of all, you don't just publish it in Darwin. What, are, what other networks do you use oh. pushing content? So... In China, uh, WeChat, uh, WeChat has another new function called channels. Mm, yeah, yeah, I do that. Weibo, and uh, that's the China 
based one, and then also Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, yeah, for the how, how short videos. Ah, so you put them also on on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, actually, I push it on Instagram, and Instagram automatically send it to Facebook, and then I also some of them I post it on LinkedIn as well. How are the comments? How is the feedback of what you're doing on <coughs> Darwin? Honestly, uh, on Douyin, I met some new fans as well, like someone who who haven't met me before. Uh, yeah, some fans we met there, like even on live, you know. Um, but interestingly, you know, the thing I've been doing, I think I got a lot more feedback from the people in the community. So every time when I go out, like to a restaurant, to a bar, or to to a supermarket, to a school, you know, almost now every time people mention about my videos. Oh, they recognize you. Yes, in um, town. Yes, I would say like eighty percent of the time now. Right. Even though I don't get a lot of comments, even on moments, but people they they did consume. I think uh, mm-hmm. because they they could talk about the content inside right. the video. Oh, so know. the video that you did this or you did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, you went to the <coughs> cruise. You know how was it? Something like that. Right now, now we we together we run a company. Right uh, here, <laughs> a media yeah. Yeah. marketing, right? right. So we obviously need that, right? At yes. Darwin and the knowledge of, you know, to know how to do it. And, and then uh, this year we're doing it for clients, right? Yes. So you starting it eight, nine months ago got us to a point where we can start doing it as a service. If you, if you were still in trading, yes, you think you would go on Darwin? You think you would do these things? Uh, I don't know, probably not. You know, I, 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 I probably I don't have the chance to really get into this. Right, the time. Five, and you the know, yeah. Right. Fernando, how's your Darwin? Um, pfft, non-existent. I just put things with my dogs, my cat. Uh, I put a couple of videos uh, for my EV car. Um, some of the people who make the, the car have seen those videos, and they are trying to get me to produce some videos for them as well. Right. But, uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's very small. I mean, I get like 50 views on my videos with my dog and my, ca- my cat, and that's it. But are you going to continue? Um, I don't know. It's just for me. It's just so short. It's more. I think that is more for brand, for for marketing. What I want is content, and that's why I'm right. on YouTube, and that's why I right. have several channels on YouTube because I'm more more focused on producing t- things that people can digest for a long time. Mm. Your, your focus, I yeah. guess. Your focus on YouTube. Yeah, and ah. I don't know how to use Douyin. It's so complicated because for Huawei, there's no English version. Right. <laughs> I, I use I use the Win, WeChat, um, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. Uh, yeah, and this is just my channels. Then I also operate the, <laughs> the here channels. channels. Yeah. So I probably and, and of course China. Now I probably post on at least ten, ten uh, social media networks. Maybe every day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we wanted to ask more about the Hong Kong situation. Hong Kong situation. Yes, you're right. you're from Hong Kong. Your family is still in Hong Kong, and yes. um, you were when we asked you that question. You say that Hong Kong um, is not the place that you would like to choose over a place like Beijing. Um, I want to ask you, what's your What's your feeling about what happened and what's going on? Well, we don't hear too much about that right now, but it was a very traumatic period. Right. Yeah, it was uh, difficult for me, I think. Yeah. I think for many, many people from Hong Kong. Yeah. You, you, how do you identify yourself? Uh, Hong Kong people, Chinese people? Uh, are you divided inside? Is Okay, uh, to be honest, after like 15, 16 years in China, I for nine and now I would say I'm hundred percent Chinese, but I'm from a city called Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah. Just like our colleagues here, uh, they are Chinese and they're from Dongguan. So I'm Chinese. I'm from Hong Kong. Right. Uh, what 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 do your parents or your friends think? I mean, do they think the same way? Uh, I'm not. I'm not hundred percent sure about all my family members, but my mom thinks like me. Hundred percent Chinese, of course. Yeah. You know, <laughs> where are you? She's from China. Where, where is she from? I mean, China, originally, China. Uh, I think it's like uh, Dongguan. Yeah, near Dongguan. Oh, uh, near yeah. Dongguan. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. So did you? Okay. One of the things that um, I posted in one of my uh, videos in my personal channel was how 
I disagreed with Western media calling it um, protest. Um, I felt that they were rioters because they were rioting around the city. And when we saw some of the most horrible things that were taking place, I thought that they were now in a category of terrorists. A lot of people uh, criticize me for using that word, but I would like to ask you, as somebody who has family down there, were your parents scared? Were they afraid to go out? Yeah, for sure. Like when I talked to my mom, you know, like uh, there, there were a few incidents near our apartment in Hong Kong. So she could actually saw people doing that kind of things, you know, to people. Like what kind of thing? Dance, you beat people up, you know, like random people up. Random. Huh? Yes. And then for sure, she, she was scared. The people with the black masks. Yes. So if you're scared to go out, that's, that's the definition of terror. But anyway... Um, I think I think that uh, I think I get your point, Fernando. I think it's uh, a sensitive times. I mean, you need to be careful how we say things. Um, I You've experienced that as well. I would say I would say that uh, those that just terrorize are terrorists. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Not all the protesters do that. I think you can't say that all the protesters do that. Uh, I mean, what were they fighting for? They were fighting for democracy. Right. My question is: Is there democracy in Hong Kong? Is, is Hong Kong a, democra a democratic place? Yeah, I think it's a complicated question. <laughs> I think they do have democracy. So you can push for more democracy. Right. But uh, do you know what I mean? You already yeah. have some level of democracy. Yeah. And, and the ways to do the things that they want to do, well, you got to evaluate the, 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 the effectiveness of what you're doing. Yeah, while doing something they thought maybe in the beginning is, uh, is for the good, they kind of ruined the cities. Sure. The, the city, pretty much, right? Mm. I mean, the, the economy hit and everything. Right now, situation has evolved to some other bad things, yeah, of right. course. Yes. Yeah, they've Hope had a very bad year. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, very Hong Kong. bad. Yes. Yeah. Um, do you think you're ever gonna go back to live there? In Hong uh, Kong? Now, no. Uh, I don't know what what will happen in the next like 10, 20 years. Right. When was the last time you were there? Maybe nine nine months ago. Six nine months ago. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, six or nine months. Yeah. Because of situation. Uh, oh right. So yeah, nine months. <laughs> yeah. Because of the situation. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. I used to go like every month, but I stopped going because of the situation. I I I just feel that um, I I don't want to risk it. Right. You know what I mean. I think a lot of people feel like that. The same. Yeah. Yeah. You've done a lot of green screen Not videos. Not only me now. Yeah, you now guys everybody, are doing it. Yeah, now <laughs> everybody's doing it. So yes. that's kind of uh, nice like, that you, yes. this is how it started. Yes, how it started. Yeah. Well, all right, so that's what's up with that. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, what's up with that? We have another one. Uh, another. This one is a photo. Um, and I got it from your... <laughs> it's funny. It's kind of the similar thing. Okay, this is the continuation. Oh, uh, this is... Right. What is this? So what's here? Who's here? Oh, okay, it was me and uh, our photographer Lester. Why? Why do? Okay, I think uh, we came back. We came back to the office uh, after we we are allowed to go back to the office, and then I brought the uh, the green screen back, and then he and I were setting up the green screen at the office. Yeah. So this was green screen 2.0, uh, the next yeah, level. Maybe 1.5. I would say. 1.5. <laughs> yeah. Do you do any green screen? No, I don't do any green screen. I mean. Um, I feel that uh, the content that I do is just most of it is outside. Uh, so I just want to show people like what China is like. So doing green screen is kind of silly. I mean, why would I? Um, and whenever I shoot inside, it's more like instructional kind of stuff, like okay. either teaching tips or okay. or I do live events okay. uh, when I bring people on Skype. Okay. So no, I have no use you for, for green screen. Just green jacket. Yeah. yeah. All right. And this was <laughs> what's up with this. All right, guys. So we are going to continue our conversation with Billy Lam. We were talking about Hong Kong and the whole Hong Kong situation, which is, well, is something that we can talk a lot about. So mm. we want, I want to know, uh, how do you discuss these things with your friends? Um, this can create a huge animosity, a huge distance between people because they see things from the different sides um have you lost any friends have you mm. had 
heavy arguments with people after this podcast you mean. yeah <laughs> <laughs> good question or <laughs> during wechat yeah. conversations or whatnot right i think for the past like eight nine months i haven't really talked to any of my friends like living in hong kong uh about this topic i did not touch on that no no one talked to me about this i did not talk to no one about this even though maybe a, a couple of friends did come here and we touch on it a little bit but we kind of like Okay, guys, let's stop. Is okay, it difficult what? to talk about it? Yeah, because you 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 never know uh, what the other guy thinks, you know. So and that uh, creates a wedge, I yeah. see. And uh, but for sure, because I've been sp- spending my time in Dongguan, so everyone out around me they share the same thoughts as like I have, right? In in, in the mainland, yes. I mean, yeah. I think more, <laughs> most people think the same thing. At least right. Chinese people, right? Right. Right. Yes. Some and foreigners, a lot of foreigners as well. Yeah, but but not all, I would say. But yeah, a lot. But you know, this is interesting what you're saying because I come from Israel. You have the uh, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict forever now, right? Right. And within friends, we think different things. You know, I may think that uh, uh, occupation is wrong. You know what we do, Israel, and I can say that. And there are some people that think like me, right? And there are some people that think differently, right? And uh, but. I think a dialogue is so important. It, we, we in Colombia, we had a similar situation. We've had a uh, revolutionary army for the last freaking 60 years. They're the most horrible people, do the most horrible things. They bomb, they killed, whatever. And uh, trying to negotiate peace, one of the things that they negotiated was that they would be forgiven. Right. Everything that they done will be forgiven, and they will give. They will be given places in in government. That happened many in many places in the history. And that was such a divisive thing because, like, people who lost their family members, people who've lost uh, their fortunes because they were kidnapped. I mean, just to forgive and let go was a very difficult thing to do for a lot of people. So mm, those 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 things are are creating such a deep wedge now between well some hardliners in hong kong Mm -hmm. and some some people in the mainland um i think i think that uh i I think that generally you're not a political person right no um but but everybody have opinions right and you have your own opinions and and you're not you're also not like a hypocrite you're not a liar right so um you think you will talk with people about that if they bring it up your friends from hong kong you know honestly or you try to I want so much to <laughs> talk about that, but uh, I just told myself, no, you know, at the end it will end up like a, a huge, fire. yeah, a huge argument and all that, you know. So, but I you know, one of the things that I learned through the conflict is that um, <clears throat> those people, those, you know, even terrorists, as, as Fernando called them, um, and and uh, more those that maybe don't terrorize but still support their cause, mm-hmm. in they think. They also are trying to help Hong Kong. Like the, the intention, the, the first intention, what they think they're doing for the long term. Which I have no idea what it, what it is. <laughs> Aren't they afraid of what uh, if the Chinese government will have more of control in Hong Kong? I don't know. They're afraid of what they may lose. But what? <laughs> I don't know. Freedom of speech. Well, let me, let, me, let me ask you. Uh, I'm going to put you on the spot, Billy, because sure. uh, <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> The extradition bill, right? Is it a good thing? I mean, did that guy deserve extradition? That the, the guy from Taiwan, yeah, the Hong, the, the, the Hong, 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 Hong Kong Kongese, yeah, 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 yeah. He did something bad in Taiwan. Yeah. He he murdered his girlfriend in Taiwan. Yeah, and um, well, what do you think about that? You know, I if you just ask me that, I I don't know the answer. But when I look at how uh, other countries they are doing with each other yeah. as a reference, I think that's, that was a right thing to do. You know what I'm saying? If you ask me just that question, I don't know. Because I don't have the knowledge to, to say yes or no. But, but based on different countries, they do this kind of th- things to each other. And I think, yeah, most of the countries, they do that. But based on, uh, uh, so, so the, it was he, they changed the law to extradite him? Well, they were trying to pass a law to extradite him. And right, people got upset, and people said, "Like, no." Nope. Well, basically, yeah, basically, what happened was Beijing said, "Okay, you're gonna have a an extradition treaty with Taiwan. You have to have an extradition treaty 
with us mainland as well. And that's when everybody like, oh, you're just interfering into Hong Kong matters, um, which is what so started So basically they were afraid the mainland will not... Uh, they were afraid uh, the mainland fair. was going to start extraditing, well, the Hong Kong was going to start extraditing uh, Hong Kong people into mainland. Right. Even though the law was very clear about no crime that uh, was not more, that would not give more than seven years in prison would not be... Um, possible to extradite to, to mainland. But I don't think that's just a very small trigger. I mean, obviously, I don't think they're terrorizing uh, Hong Kong for months just because of this one thing. It's much deeper, right? Well, it, it felt like it were they, they started to feel a very strong presence into very important matters for Hong Kong. And my, my view is when he went back to, to China in 1997... They say, okay, we're going to have a 50-year transition. It's not like at midnight in uh, 2047, boom, yeah. everybody went to China. No, there are gradual changes right. that were right. super. And we've seen it, right? Mm-hmm. Like when I took the, the, the human train to Hong Kong, we're like, wow, now this immigration from mainland in West Kowloon. Right. That, that's a change. That's a, that's a major thing. Ah, oh, they do the immigration in Kowloon? Yes. To the mainland? Yes. And not like the Changping train that does it here? No. Ah. They do it in uh, Hong Kong territory. I mean, that's something that uh, uh, couldn't happen before. Exactly. So these things happen gradually. Right. Uh, this is something that kind of like presented itself. It was not something that, that, that Beijing was looking to do. It just presented itself as a situation that this guy brought up basically is there is there a way to know billy mm-hmm. um for someone like you you're from hong kong you have friends you have family you know you know a lot of people there of course uh, what's the percentage in hong kong right now how many people support the protests and how many people don't no idea it's very difficult to yes know? i think so yeah i think because you know when you when you listen to uh if we put it like two sides okay it's actually it's not exactly like that but if we did put it like two sides of course each side say their own story right sure so i don't i don't know the exact number i think from what i see i believe uh, uh my opinion i believe that um uh, there are quite a lot of people that think i i get what they want i get what they're doing but they went way too far and i i'm it's against the way, them it's not the way to do it right and then people start supporting the other side or, or so it's complicated there's not only two sides yeah in a way right right yeah when is the last time you were in hong kong fernando well i should have been there like about nine months ago because i needed to change my contact lenses on right. my doctor is over there but uh, i just couldn't go yeah so and now even worse so you're <laughs> saying you really want to talk about it you said you're dying to talk about yeah, it in, with a, them. In, a, in a way yeah. yeah right but you don't you know i tried i i I think that the main thing I, w- I really want to know, you know, some of my friends, well educated, you know, have good jobs, but how, co- how could they have this kind of mindset, you know, to, to let's say for example, let's say, the the police is bad, I I I I just cannot understand how how can they end up think like that, you Brand, know, brainwash. Social media. A lot, uh, of, peop- I, a lot I of people. Say. A lot of people blame uh, Western influence in this situation. They they say um, that there is a lot of pressure from America. Uh, for example, the bill that passed in the in the House of Representatives in in America, the Hong Kong yeah. Democracy Bill, whatever. That was bullshit. Is that? Well, <laughs> yeah, but it does send a message. Do you know what I'm saying? It, it's like. China saying, okay, we're going to pass a California uh, freedom bill. No, I mean, the bill was bullshit. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, But it's exactly the same. It's like China trying to tell America and Californians what to do, what not to do. And California is one of the largest and most important states in the United States. If they separate from from America, America would feel that loss. Right. But is that ridiculous? Right. True. Yeah. Do you think uh, things are going to change? Soon, because of the other situation, the virus, change? What, what do yeah, you mean yeah, the change? protests, are they going to come back? Come back? Uh, I hope not. <laughs> you hope not. Yeah. Look, um, the way that I see it, 
is this all revolves around the United States, in my opinion. Basically, when he was going to be impeached or he was going through impeachment, you need to make noise somewhere else and you need to show strength somewhere else so that the eyeballs go somewhere else. So I felt that's what happened with Iran. That's what happened. I mean, that's what they do. Politicians, hey, hey, that's look what over politicians there. Hey, hey, look over there. Yes. Hey, there's issues over there. There's yeah. nothing, nothing's happening here. Hey, yes. like a magician. So you mean you think, you think they really strongly supported that? And um, they, uh, you know, they, they, um, they used it as they a distraction. They did things to help it grow? That's look, what you think? I saw a video, I don't know, uh, I'm quite a lot into politics. So I saw a video of a man called Steve Bannon. I don't know if you know yeah, Steve Bannon. Sure. Um, with a um, Hong Kong uh, politician or activist as well, doing a live event on YouTube, telling uh, these rioters what to do, where to go, like literally telling them, like, you need to wa wait until nine o'clock and then you can actually go into this place because then the police will be, be like, actually giving them instructions. So you feel like the United States had a strong hand in this? Um, people in America. Yeah. I could tell you that I saw Steve Bannon doing this and, well, if that's not manipulation, is that not interference in Hong Kong affairs, what else is there? So I'm not going to say Americans, but Steve Bannon did that right. on behalf of perhaps uh, other people right. and a certain movement in America that wants to destabilize China. You don't talk about it even with your sister? No. No. Only, and my, you, only and my mom. And you don't know what your sister thinks? I don't know. She, you don't even know what she thinks I about it? I don't know. Interesting, huh? It's interesting. Very oh, interesting. I think one thing is uh, I haven't gone back for like eight months, nine right, months, right? right? So I did not really have a chance, you know. So when I talk to her on like Facebook or, or WeChat, we talk on other things, you know. So you see your friends sometimes posting for or against, I guess. Yes. You've seen it. You just ignore yes. it. Yes. Yeah, I, yeah. A, f a bit frustrated or uh, don't understand why, but uh, what, what can you do, you know? You know? Yeah, people are going to think what they're going to think. Yeah. I guess. All right. Well, this was a very, very heavy end <laughs> of our <laughs> podcast. Yes. But thank you very much for sharing this is because, well, okay. this is okay. coming from a person from Hong Kong yes, who loves you. China and lives in yes, China. Yes. And, well, it was a good perspective to this situation. All right. Billy Lamb, thank you very no much problem. for thank joining you, us. Thank you. We appreciate you doing this. And, uh, well, guys, you know what to do. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. And when you do that, don't forget to hit the bell button to be notified whenever there is a new video out. And make sure to follow us in our social media down here. And until we see you again, this was, of course, China. See you next. See you.